What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another fun episode of PSR Reacts. This is going to be a little fun time we're going to have together, and we're going to read this really amazing bit of journalism by HuffPost. Now, if you know about the HuffPost, you probably already know that very left-leaning website that's owned by the Washington Post, but they haven't been very relevant for a long time. So we'll take that as a kind of precursor to what we're about to read. I'm not going to read the whole article. I encourage you, if you want to try to sit through it and read the whole thing, to do that. It's basically liberal activism at work under the guise of journalism and reporting. It's not reporting. It is specifically meant to target a certain audience and you know, stoke fear and try to change policies based on that level of fear and to try to shift the public perception and skew it and distort it from what it really is. This article does mention me, and I thought that's why it would be a good idea to check it out and just have a little fun reading it. But first, you know what I gotta do? I gotta thank KAK Industry. KAK, sometimes referred to as CAC, which means poop in a bunch of different languages doesn't mean poop in English. In fact, it means high quality AR parts, everything you could possibly want for your ARs. They got a bunch of different calibers. We're talking nine by 39, talking 76239, talking obviously 556, 945. I mean, they make barrels, BCGs, just for about every single AR caliber you could possibly ever want. And it's made right here in the USA. And that's on my mama. If you're looking for parts for your AR, and high quality, affordable parts, Check out KAK and never use the code PSR to get 10% off your order. That would be horrible. So thank you to KAK for sponsoring this channel. So we're going to read the first couple of paragraphs and then I'm going to get to the paragraph where it mentions ya boy. So the title of the article is How the Far Right is Escaping Biden's Attempted Crackdown on Ghost Guns. New regulations on untraceable firearms have only spurred threats against law enforcement and efforts by extremist groups to avoid oversight. The article is written by Leela Hassan, and it was published November 30th, 2022, on the Huff Post. So if it's your first time here and you're unfamiliar with my content, welcome. Uh, we have a fun time here, and it really is pretty wholesome content, to be honest. Out of all the gun content that's on YouTube, I'd like to say that mine is like pretty wholesome, and we have a lot of fun here. Now, I have in the past done a lot of stuff on 3D printing, my channel name used to be Print Shoot Repeat until YouTube cracked down on me and basically all but said, we don't want you to post 3D printing content anymore. So I've had to do a little bit of a shift as of late and I had to change my whole entire YouTube name to PSR, which of course is an acronym for Print Shoot Repeat. And I also had to remove about 70% of the content on my YouTube channel. So that was about 14 to 15 million views. Now that was a very unfortunate yet necessary step that I had to take to try to keep this channel because I currently uh, have two strikes. And if I get one more strike, I will be banned from the platform eternally and uh, entirely. So for now, we are trying to do our best to stay within the rules of YouTube. So there's a little bit of context if it's your first time here. Now, I like to think that my content is fairly family friendly. And yes, I do have some humor that's maybe a little more adult. I try to really stay away from anything politically related. If you're familiar with my content, you'll know I really do not post very edgy stuff. I've been very careful as to stay within the guidelines of what YouTube allows on its platform. YouTube does not allow instructional content on how to build firearms. What YouTube has said in their statement on their firearms policy is that they allow reviews of guns. They allow discussion around the use of guns and legislation surrounding other issues with guns. They even allow live shooting of guns on their platform as long as in a safe environment, which is always things that I've done on my channel. It's always been out of range with the right safety protocols. With all that said, I still was targeted and my videos were deemed uh, in violation of their firearms policy. So when you review a gun, um, you talk about the different features of it and how it works and maybe what style of gun is it? Is it a bolt action? Is it a semi-auto? How does the blowback work? Is it direct or delayed? Or all these things, right? And you talk about the different parts and the and the ability for each of those parts to be upgraded and things like that, right? That's all I've ever done in the videos that I've made on 3D printed guns. And I've never said, 
here, this is how you install this. Hey, this is how you build this. And yet I still get my videos removed. And I think the main reason is because of one thing, and that is the effectiveness and the reach of my content. I've had plenty of comments on my YouTube channel from people who say that they support gun control and that they are actually like fairly anti-gun, yet they still enjoy my content. If you're one of those people, I'm, I'm glad you're watching this. I disagree and I think that you know, everyone deserves the right to defend themselves with a firearm and be armed. The fact that those people are enjoying my content and like my content and get entertained by it is a big sign that this channel has the power to influence people and has the power to entertain people in a way that most other channels related to firearms can't. So you might not be even into guns and you enjoy my humor, you enjoy the kind of lighthearted fun that we have on this channel and you enjoy the technology behind 3D printing. And the fact that my channel has that ability is very scary for people who want to control your ability to defend yourself and people who are anti-gun in general and people who don't understand that it's a completely legal thing to do in most states in this country is to 3D print your own gun. That is what scares YouTube and I think that is why I've been targeted with regard to my channel. I've completely avoided politics on this channel. I haven't discussed my own personal views really at all in terms of political issues. It's just been gun rights issues is something I believe in and it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, if you're left, right, center, um, everyone I believe has the right to defend themselves and be armed. So apparently being completely apolitical in your YouTube channel and believing in that still gets you put in the Huffington Post and labeled as a right-wing extremist. So let's read the article. First paragraph. <clears throat> when President Joe Biden announced a new rule to regulate ghost guns in April, he hoped to reduce crime and make it harder for violent people to access untraceable weapons. Ghost guns are firearms without serial numbers or registrations that people can generally buy without a background check. They come in kits that are about 80% complete, which skirts most legal restrictions on gun sales. And the customer assembles the parts into a finished weapon. So let's break down that paragraph a little bit. So Joe Biden did uh, enact some new rules to regulate uh, ghost guns. And you'll notice that they always use this term ghost guns because it's scary and it's a politically manufactured term to make this homemade gun. Basically, it's just they're saying ghost gun is a homemade gun. That is all it is. It could also be not a homemade gun. Apparently, according to their definition, the statistics they usually use include guns that were serialized that had the serial numbers scratched off. They could also include guns that existed and were made before serial numbers were required on guns. So that's also a ghost gun. Here they're making it very clear that they're talking about 80% guns, and I think that's what they're referring to as the ghost guns, even though there are multiple definitions and they get included in the statistics of guns that are ghost guns or DIY guns or just guns without serial numbers. So there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of bring these guns into the statistics to make them uh, fit your agenda. It also includes 3D printed guns are also included as ghost guns, as we'll see later. A felon, a terrorist, a domestic abuser can go from a gun kit to a gun in as little as 30 minutes, Biden said when he announced the rule. So Biden did uh, put some regulations in and it basically, in short, kind of uh, restricted the ability for companies that are selling 80% kits to sell the entire package, including like the jig. And you had to sell or buy the jig separately. And it's kind of vague and really hard to understand. And there actually was a preliminary injunction filed that got passed. So the companies are no longer having to uh, abide by that regulation uh, until the injunction is lifted. More than 20,000 guns were reported to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives after being recovered in criminal investigations last year, according to a White House fact sheet. Interesting. Well, I wonder how many of those ghost guns were used in violent crimes or how many were just seized and that was the crime. So in the uh, paragraphs below, they kind of talk about the ATF new regulations and like the new uh, definition of a uh, firearm or receiver. You can read the full article to watch that. And then further on the article, HuffPost starts to uh, introduce the idea of these far-right ghost gun enthusiasts and how they're boldly threatening law enforcement. They mention the Boogaloo Boys. They mention some of the companies that are in firearms industry that are selling these kits. They also 
mention the Ghost Gunner and Cody Wilson. And in addition, they talk about the FPC, the Firearms Policy Coalition, and some of their lawsuits uh, and these unconstitutional uh, regulations that are be p- being put in and just talking about how they're fighting them, but that's not how they frame it. They talk about how FPC has merged with uh, Hawaiian shirts and how that's so uh, extreme and how that they're doing like a giveaway of a gun on their website. And, you know, that's the, the kind of extremist stuff that we see, you know, is from these far right extremists is doing a giveaway of a gun. How dare you do that in the, the United States of America? And then below, they also mentioned uh, a meme posted by our friend Control Pew. I think it's Orange County Choppers. Uh, it's a guy and his son uh, going back and forth. I'll post the meme. It's a meme about how the government doesn't always have your best interest or your safety in mind. I don't completely trust the government meme is a very, it's that's, that's an instant sign that you are a right wing extremist. Now, this is where I come in into the article. And this is kind of a very eye opening look at just the lack of research that this journalist did on my channel and who I am and what I represent and what I put out there to the world. So let's read it. Ghost gun enthusiasts have become increasingly frustrated with nonprofit organizations and journalists whom they blame for getting their content removed from mainstream platforms. In newsletters, ghost gun groups have accused YouTube of unnecessarily removing their videos. YouTube's policy, according to spokesperson Jack Malone, says users cannot upload content on how to make a gun, but the platform does allow gun reviews dialogue about gun legislation, and even gun demonstrations if the environment is safe. Our firearms policy has long prohibited content intended to instruct viewers on how to make firearms, including ghost guns or 3D printed guns, Malone said. That's just like I stated before, nothing I've ever done has been in violation of that policy. I have reviewed all of the guns and I've never given any instructional content on YouTube or elsewhere, honestly. Um, you can check all of my videos that were backlogged to Odyssey. None of those include instructions on how to build a gun. All right, here we go. But a removal from YouTube doesn't mean users won't find other ways to share tips and tricks on how to build ghost guns. Print Shoot Repeat, a prominent page that shares building plans, memes, and other 3D printed firearms tips, announced in August that it had deleted some videos after seeing other channels get removed from YouTube. Print Shoot Repeat instead instructed followers to go to his page on Odyssey, a website dubbed the YouTube of the far right by extremist experts and littered with ghost gun plans, prints, and parts. Oh God, the sky is falling. So let's just break down that paragraph a little bit. So this reporter uh, clearly does not watch my content because they say that I share building plans. Um, building plans. I assume they are talking about files, and I've never shared the files on my YouTube or anywhere else. I've like retweeted certain um, release like tweets by accounts on Twitter uh, about releases of guns and stuff, but I've never posted the files anywhere. And it's something that I just have avoided because I know that it's you know I've got to play by YouTube's rules because this is uh, how I reach the most people is on YouTube and I've never ever broken the rules and yet this reporter falsely claimed that I share the building plans. Yes, do I share memes? Yeah, absolutely. I make meme content. I don't know about 3D printed firearm tips. I share 3D printing tips. Whether you print uh, a gun or you print, you know, a little figurine is up to you but I don't share directly 3D printed firearm tips on this channel. Yeah, I did have to remove some videos. I was like, wow, I have a video similar to this. This doesn't break the YouTube policy, but they're deleting these channels. So yeah, that's what I did. And of course I uh, suggested people to go to Odyssey, which is the only other place that I, um, you know, I have a rumble now that's backlogged all of my old content, but the Odyssey page has been all of the backlog content, the all the content that if it gets re- deleted from YouTube is on my Odyssey. Leela, um, please go check out my Odyssey content. You will not find any of that that breaks the YouTube terms of service. And I know you might be saying right now, like, well, fuck the YouTube terms of service. Just post what you want on Odyssey. Post all the stuff you want on Odyssey. And I get that, but it's just important from the context of this article, how they're accusing me. Clearly, I was in violation of this policy. So, you know, it makes sense that I would skirt it and now direct people to go to this right-wing extremist page, Odyssey, which I've never heard 
that being the YouTube of the far right by any uh, expert or anyone else refer to it like that. But it's interesting because that's what our extremist expert uh, here has said. They can do what they need without coming under government purview. They love challenges like this and they want to develop more technologies, said Colin Clark, a senior research fellow and director of research at the Sufon Group, a security consulting firm. We underestimate these folks too often when there are talented, smart people investing in these technologies, said Clark, who focuses on domestic and global extremism at Sufon. I would caution against underestimating people like this. They have proven time and time again that they are quite capable. It's almost like when you read this, it's like they want the government to crack down on this uh, as a technology, and this is not within your rights to be able to do this, which is completely false. In the United States of America, you can make your own gun. It's always been your right to be able to make your own gun. Now, states have tried to crack down on that. There's been a few states that have enacted these anti-DIY gun laws, and that is a reality. However, federally, it's never been illegal to make your own gun in this country. And I could see how someone reading this article would totally believe that that would be illegal. There's no way uh, 3D printing a gun is legal in this country, but that's how they want you to perceive it. And that's how they want you to believe this right you have doesn't exist. And that's kind of scary because when you think about your rights uh, as something that you are born with here in this country, and when they get you know targeted deliberately, and when you're labeled a right-wing extremist for just practicing that right that you have in this country, and you're labeled that, it's a dangerous road to go down because there are a ton of different people from different political backgrounds, different racial, ethnic backgrounds in this community. And when you label them that, it's really completely horrible research on, on their part. But we don't expect anything better from the HuffPost, obviously. So in conclusion, I'm not going to read the rest of the article, but it's important to remember that we live in a diverse place. This is a diverse country. We have a lot of different viewpoints. And the beauty of this country, of ours, is that we can express those viewpoints. And if we are distrustful of the government, we are totally allowed to voice that. And if we want to print a gun because we're distrustful of the government, we are totally allowed to do that. Does that mean we are violent right-wing terrorists? Absolutely not. So I know that there's been other hit pieces like this out there that have talked about you know, three printing guns, and they've mentioned me. Uh, I just thought it would be interesting for us to read a little bit of this, the part that mentions me. So do I expect anything better from the HuffPost? Absolutely not. Um, it would appear that they are, in addition to huffing post, also huffing jankum, which is fermented human feces. The way that they're, you know, doing their research, it seems like maybe they have gotten too high on their own feces. So uh, thank you to Huffington Post for continuing to uh, put my name out there. I know you might think that I'm a right-wing extremist, but that is incorrect. Try again, smoke some more Jankum, and I will continue to be apolitical and post fun content on this channel. Um, if you want to watch some of my old videos that got removed by YouTube um, and were incorrectly dubbed as breaking the firearms policy, you can go to my Odyssey, which is not the YouTube of the far right. Um, it's just a place where they allow content that is not... Uh, censored. Anywho, that's going to be a wrap for this episode of PSR Reacts. If you're having a rough day, remember it'll pass. Life throws you curveballs. Just got to keep swinging. And if you love someone in your life, remember to tell them you love them. Thanks so much, guys. Love you, and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Here is a shocking heads up for parents about teen drug use. One Florida Sheriff's Department warns there's a new way for your kids to get high. And as Fox City's Jack Miller reports, they're using raw sewage. The Washington Post, the Drudge Report, and Inside Edition are all talking about Jenkum. It could be uh, toxic and, and harming. The bulletin describes Jenkum as gas produced by raw sewage that's allowed to ferment. Pictures show young people who appear to be breathing in Jenkum. We weren't able to confirm tonight if Jenkum is a problem for law enforcement in our area. Cops are calling it Jenkum or the human waste drug, but parents need to be aware that kids are calling it by the more popular slang term, butt hash. Butt hash. What's that smell? That's my favorite smell. It's fermented human feces. Jankum. About to Huffington this Jankumton, if you know what I mean. Let's go. I huff Jankum, and I huff post. I huff Jankum, then I see ghosts. I huff Jankum, then I eat it with toast. I huff Jankum, and now I am dosed. 
When I'm huffing on the jankum, you can't stop me. When I'm huffing on the jankum, you look like a Nazi. I got this good jank, I'm about to do the most. Why? Cause I write for the fucking Huffington Post. Oh, you believe that everyone has the right to defend themselves? I know I'm smoking jankum, but still, I'm gonna have to say that doesn't fit the narrative, unfortunately. So, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, label you a right wing extremist now, and you're gonna be banished to the gulag. Gulag, go to the gulag, 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 banish to the gulag. Boy, I do love me some jankum, aka butt hash.